Hey everybody, Doug Fink here. I want to take you through a module I wrote for PowerShell called Convert from Markdown. A little bit about me, I'm a 10-time Microsoft PowerShell MVP. I wrote the book PowerShell for Developers. I build advanced PowerShell tools. I do talks on PowerShell. I do trainings on PowerShell and I blog on PowerShell. If you want to catch up with me, you can do it on Twitter. There's my blog. And you can take a look at the source code I've written for this particular module and others that I have out there up on GitHub. So let's get started. Bring up Visual Studio Code, and I'll create a file called mydoc.markdown. Markdown's a pretty big universal uh, tool to write information in for like readmes or other types of documentation. So let's take it and do a couple examples. So let's say I was writing something about my PowerShell module. I talked about strings. I can make it a heading. Call it PowerShell strings. This sets a variable to a string. And now I can actually put a snippet of code in here and I can have it colorized syntactically by using a code fence. With three back ticks, I can tell it the code that I'm going to give it, PowerShell. We can close it off with three ticks. And then anything inside here, Markdown will, will render it with coloring. So let's take a look. $A equals a string. What's nice about Visual Studio Code is I can, can hit Control K V and it'll render it for me as it would look on GitHub, for example. So that's pretty cool. So I get the left hand side, two hashtags gives me a heading two, and if I wrap code in the three ticks with a PS, it'll colorize it for me. Now some folks up on the internet, I've seen them do techniques with these types of files. So for example, I can type in chapter start, I can make that a comment, and I can wrap it in a chapter end. Now my PowerShell commandlet will look at, read this file and look for those, those markers and do things with it. So let's see what it does. Let's take it one more chapter, we'll call them PowerShell ints. This sets a variable to a integer, and we'll set it to an integer. Okay, so we have two things. I'm calling them chapter start and chapter end, so I have two chapters in here. Now, if I bring up PowerShell, and I can say convert from markdown, now you can get this up on the gallery, you can install it on your machine, and you can be off to the races. I'll give it the file I want it to convert. Let's run it. It does a couple things for you. We'll get back to the severity in a moment. Let's go back to Visual Studio Code, and if I look at the file directory, I can see that a manuscript directory got created. What does that do? Well, it creates a chapter zero. Let's take a look. So chapter zero is what's in between the first chapter start and end. Chapter one contains what's in between the second block, chapter start and end. As a bonus, the commandlet actually pulls out any fenced code blocks that end with ps and creates a lint file. I call it lint this, and it copies that code into a PowerShell file and then it runs script analyzer against it. So we can see that it says, okay, this variable was created, but it was never used. So if we go back to our document, I can just print it out $A here, and we'll print it out $A here. And when I run it, all analyzed, no issues. So what this tool does is, at the moment, two different things. Pulls apart your one file, breaks them into chapters, and it grabs all of your PowerShell and checks that your examples that you're writing, if they actually pass the script analyzer test and gives you some hints. Now, why did we choose this format where it breaks things out into naming the chapters and putting them in a book.txt and put them into two different files? There's a few reasons. First of all, we can do something like a lean pub on the internet. This is a format that it accepts and it will actually print a book for you. So based on that idea, if you actually install something called Pandoc, 
and you can get that on the internet and you can check out the readme on this library up on my github you can see how to install pandoc and a couple of other pieces these are tools used by o'reilly and so on to convert every kind of format that's out there whether it's a word document latex md files so on and so forth it can read those in and generate another format so you can go from markdown to say HTML, markdown to a Word file, or markdown to say PDF. So let's see that in action. So we can do the markdown again, and there's an output type on here. And I've built in that you can generate one of three types. Let's try and create an HTML file. And I'm going to use the hyphen show that's also on this feature or on this function. It'll create the HTML, and then it will display it in a browser. So this thing. The, this fun function will now do three things. It'll take the my doc, pull out all the chapters into separate files. It'll analyze, do a script analyzing across all of your examples, and then it will create an HTML file, show it, and it'll even add you add a table of contents. And it's just that quick. So here's your table of contents. Here's it actually took both of those files, those TXT files, and built them into uh, this HTML format. And it does a few more things. So for example, we can do a Word doc. Let's take that down here. So it just did the same operation, broke everything out into chapters, analyzed all of your PowerShell samples, and then created a Word file with a nice table of contents. And last but not least, we can also create a PDF. This takes a little bit longer. And that's our PDF ready to go. And clearly, if you have more chapters and if you actually use headings with the pound sign, pound sign inside of your markdown, it will translate into a nice nested table of contents. So I wrote this so I could easily repurpose my work, my markdown files. I can sit and write in this really cool markdown approach inside of Visual Studio Code. I can see it render. And then when I'm done, I can run this through my markdown function and generate my chapters that are ready to be made into HTML, docx, or PDFs. And the bonus, all the samples that I put inside my markdown can at least be script analyzed to a certain degree so I can figure out which examples don't make sense or may not actually run or have errors in them. So that's it. Go up on the PowerShell gallery, look for convert markdown from markdown and grab the code, head over to the GitHub and see how it was written. Thanks for watching.